Hello everyone and welcome to our ATEC channel. If you're new to the channel, you should know that we cover very exciting topics that you've probably wondered about. For example, today we're discovering the world of underwater welding, more specifically the dangers that surround it. So stay put, we'll see it all together, let's get started. As we understand it, underwater welding is a type of welding that is done underwater. Many different welding techniques can be used underwater. Arc welding is one of the best known. The need to underwater welding is required for ship repairs, working on oil platforms, or maintenance of underwater pipes for example. This means that people who are qualified for this field can find work anywhere in the world. But just how do you qualify for a kind of job like this? Let's take a look at what exactly this kind of job requires. When welding underwater, the environment around welder is obviously wet. The underwater welder puts on a suit and uses special welding tools for the particular environment. The equipment used can be designed to be safe as possible for the user. This is done by reducing the risk of electrical shock in creation of hazard situations. A person qualified for underwater welding must both be approved welder and a certified diver. But even more important than that, he or she must be able to safely and effectively prepare a scene for welding. That starts with confirming the welds used are of high quality. Some underwater welders are trained in welding. They learn welding skills and earn a diving certificate to work as an underwater welder. Others start a commercial divers. They decide to expand the horizons by learning welding. In all cases, the training includes long hours of learning about safety procedures. These learners must pass certification tests before starting their careers. But all of this certainly comes at a price, as the trade is no picnic. One of the biggest dangers of underwater welders is electrocution. This can happen if the equipment used is not suitable for the job. For this to happen, the equipment must be insulated. In addition, it must come with a sealed electrode. To reduce the risk of an incident, the equipment must be tested before use. It should be understood that the arc in fresh water is irregular and unstable. Therefore, it requires the welder's experience to firmly fix the weld, otherwise the risk of electrocution is high. Also, did you know the combination of hydrogen and oxygen can form multiple pockets of gas? When these gas pockets are ignited during welding, they can cause explosions. These explosions can easily be fatal. How can the welder protect himself in these cases? Well, if he hears the slight crackling sound while wet welding, it is probably a buildup of hydrogen and oxygen bubbles. In this case, the welding should be stopped immediately. The welder must find where the gases are accumulating before resuming. In some specific cases, welders can create a dry chamber around the object being welded. A dry chamber, the name implies, allows for dry underwater weld. This type of welding is also known as hyperbaric welding. Welders who perform this type of high pressure welding must be specialized skills to weld under high pressure. Thus, they do not work in wet environments, and this has many advantages for them. Although making dry chambers can be time consuming, it represents more safety when they're working. But unfortunately, the risks they face in their job don't end there. You may also know this, but ocean water is heated by the absorption of solar radiation, but not only. It also depends on winds, condensation of water vapor, and conductive transfer from the atmosphere. We conclude the temperature of the water at the surface is higher than its depth. The difference in density of water is also a factor. This is also why the temperature varies from one ocean to another. Salt water has a higher density than water with a lower salinity. The latter is therefore colder. Unfortunately, the water temperature can be too low for welders. When the water is too cold, it allows heat to escape from the body. For a long time, in cold water can result in significant heat loss. This is a condition called hypothermia. Hypothermia can lead to metabolic problems. It can lead to organ failure. But how can welders protect themselves if they have to work under deep water for a long time? Well, it's important to have a rubber suit. This insulated gear can protect you from excessive temperatures. But unfortunately, the dangers don't end there. Did you know that working too long in high pressure environment can result in a temporary or permanent deafness? It can also result in damage to organs like the lungs. A diver can also suffer from decompression sickness. What is it exactly? This sometimes occurs when a diver ascends a little too quickly from a high pressure area to a low pressure area. In simple terms, it can happen when a diver ascends from deep water and quickly heads to the surface in the water. A rather special phenomenon occurs in the human body. Nitrogen bubbles enter the bloodstream. These bubbles cause unwanted symptoms. For example, skin rashes and joint pain. But sometimes it can even be more serious. This condition can cause paralysis and can even be fatal. In this environment, surprising accidents can happen. Indeed, experienced underwater welders can drown. And the equipment is not always in question. Of course, obsolete or poorly maintained equipment such as mass and oxygen tanks can be blamed. 
But another real danger is when a diver gets caught in an underwater obstacle. Occasionally, these obstacles can be the equipment itself. The deeper you go, the less noticeable it becomes. So it's easy to get your equipment caught on coral, or worse, to get wrapped in the lines of the equipment. In order to avoid such situations, it's essential to check your equipment before diving. A welder must check his own air supply tank. But if this job is too dangerous, why do some people insist on doing it? First and foremost, because some find this career path attractive and rewarding. And the demand is there. Welding is not only needed, but is in high demand in many industries around the world. As a result, there is an atomic demand for qualified underwater welders. What about automation of this trade? To date, this cannot be considered. This technique is only to be done with human assistance. The financial aspect of this profession cannot be neglected. Since it's rare and requires a rare qualification, underwater welders can earn a more than interesting salary. This is not always the case for regular welders, nor is it always the case for regular divers. But there's ways to make this job safer. Underwater welders must be in good physical condition. Therefore, some companies require their employees to obtain a certification of fitness to work. In addition to this, it is important that a welder never dives alone. As mentioned earlier in the video, some opt to work from a dry room. For the well-being of their employees, some companies even make use of decompression chambers. This allows them to avoid decompression sickness by descending and ascending more slowly while working. Do you think this is enough for this kind of risky job? Tell us what you think in the comments. That's it, we've already reached the end of our video. If you like the topic of the day, leave us a little blue thumbs up. Feel free to leave us a comment and suggestion for a next topic. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe. Activate the notification bell to be among the first to see our next video. And we'll see you soon on ATAG.